Hi all. I hope everyone is doing well. So I'm Dila, and uh, in today's APM community call, we are talking about CSC and JSON transformation in MI400. So this is an open forum. So all of you are welcome to ask questions at any time. You can ask questions via the Zoom or via the YouTube channel. And also at the end of the session, you can unmute and ask questions from the APM team or from the community. And also I have to mention that this recording, this session is recording and the recording would be hosted in YouTube in our YouTube channel, WSO2, after the end of the session. Okay, so uh, welcome you guys again and let's start the session. Yeah, as I said, I'm Dilan Tarata and I'm a senior software engineer working at WSO2. So uh, in today's session, if we quickly go through the agenda that what we are doing, so in today, we are giving you guys the overview of this integration domain and how the JSON and CSC transformations are critical in the integration domain. And uh, we are talking about a new feature that were introduced in uh, MI400, the CSV connector. And also we are talking about the free market templates in payload factory mediator, which was introduced recently to MI. And uh, we are having several demonstrations of uh, how these two things work in MI. Okay, so uh, if I talk about the uh, JSON and CSV, so those two data types act a huge role in integration domain. So if you have to do some sort of an integration, 99% in of the time you have to work with a CSV or a JSON data type. It might be converting uh, the JSON to another JSON or converting a CSV to a JSON or anything like that. So you have to tackle with them later in life when you are doing integrations. So in MI, even before 400 release, we had a huge support to those transformations. MI was mainly targeted towards those things. So if we talk about even before 400, we had lots of methods to do CSV and JSON and all the other transformations. So if you talk about that methods, the first thing that comes to our mind is data mapper. So it's a visual data mapper that you can uh, draw what, what are the transformations that you need to do and uh, you can get the real time uh, transformation happening in MI. And also we have the payload factory. We are, we, are, we are today also talking about payload factory a bit more. And even before the MI400 releases, we had the payload factory mediator. Basically, you can use the payload factory to generate the payload, and you can inject some variables here and there and create the payload as you need. And also, we have the script mediator where you can write down a custom script that you need. This is not limited to the transformations anyway, but you can do any transformation that you need using the script mediator also. And accessibility mediator was there for the same purpose. For the transformation and also we had the class mediator it's basically not for the transformation but it's to extend the capabilities of mi but if you need to do a complex transformation yeah you can go ahead with the class mediator so those are the very popular methods that were available in mi even after the 400 even before the 400 release and uh, in today's session we are more targeting towards the new features that we introduced in my to integrator 400 release to support users of MI to easily do transformations for CSV and JSON data types. Okay, so the first thing that we need to uh, introduce today is a CSV module. So before going to CSV module, I'll uh, talk a little bit about the modules concept. So in uh, MI400, we introduced this modules concept. This is more like a connector, but uh, if you get a connector, we are using them to connect with third-party APIs or services. But uh, the modules are not like that. We are using modules to extend the capabilities which are coming natively with MI uh, dynamically. If you want to extend the CSV uh, processing functionalities of MI, you can use a CSV module, something like that. You can dynamically extend the capabilities of MI using these modules. So uh, CSV modules is the first of that kind. So we have introduced this recently to facilitate the MI users with an easy to use interface and all to work with CSV data. So this is a screenshot that I took from an integration flow 
where we use these uh, CSV operations. And in the upcoming demo, we will show you how to use it very clearly. So uh, yeah, before going to the demo, I want to show you that what are the available transformation methods in the CSV module. So if you take the CSV module, it has so many capabilities. Uh, first thing is CS2 to CSV transformation. If you have a CSV payload, then we can transform it to another CSV payload. So that we can do easily with the CSV module. And also if you have a CSV payload, then we can convert it very easily within a few, few steps into a JSON payload. And uh, also if you have a CSV, then we can easily convert it to an XML. So it's very similar to JSON conversion, very similar. And then uh, the vice versa is also supported. Like, let's say I have a JSON array, and then if I want to convert that into a CSV, then we can easily do it with a single step. And also, uh, if you have an XML, then we can easily convert it into a CSV. So those are the operations that are supported by the CSV module. And yeah, let's go and see a demo of how it works. Okay, so uh, I have opened the Indication Studio. So I'm doing the demo using the Indication Studio. So yeah, this is the welcome screen of it. And uh, yeah, first of all, I need to tell you that if you take about a, take a CSV payload, we can uh, input that CSV payload or into the MI using several methods. Uh, one would be using a file connector. We can use a file connector and we can tell the file connector to read the CSV file and add it to the mediation flow. And uh, also we can use REST API or API. Uh, the API, we can send our CSV payload via the API. So in today's demonstration, uh, with the time beans, I'm going to the second method. So I'm creating an API and I'm feeding my CSV data through the API and doing the transformation. So in the integration studio, getting started page, uh, I thought of starting with sample. So we have the hello world sample, save sample. So in this sample, we are getting a sample REST API. So I'm clicking on it. And let's say save it as hello CSV. And it would create me the uh, hello world sample project. So in this project, we have a sample API, uh, which I'm gonna use in the demo to demonstrate how this flow works. Okay, so uh, and I'll show you the payload that I'm going to use. So this is a CSV file that I have created. It has uh, several columns like ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and IP address. So I'm feeding this into MI and I'm going to do the transformation. Okay. So yes, my uh, Hello World project is created. I'll just take the uh, API from it. Okay, so uh, in the Hello World example project, uh, we have this setup, this API setup. So it has this uh, payload factory here and a response mediator. But uh, for this demo, I don't need the payload factory. So I'm gonna remove it. And then uh, after removing the payload factory, we can uh, import the uh, CSV module into our workspace and then uh, do our transformation.
So this is my project that I created before. It has the uh, composite exporter and the config project. So in the config project, if I want to use config API, I have my uh, hello world API here. This is the one that was created by the uh, sample. Just a few second, my Please, please bear with me. Uh, uh, my laptop uh, is not stuck.
sorry uh, sorry about the delay and uh, so uh, in integration studio uh, we can import the uh, cfc module so uh, i uh, quickly go through the the other option that we are talking about so uh, that's the CFC module that I discussed, and I'll I'll show the demo at the end of the presentation with the uh, pre-market templating also. So uh, the next thing that we are talking about in the presentation is the uh, pre-market templates that we introduced into the payload factory mediator. So if we talk about the payload factory mediator, it was here even before the MI400. So uh, the payload factory mediator, the main purpose was to uh, create payloads, like uh, in the mediation flow, anywhere in the mediation flow, we can create new payloads using the payload factory mediator. Uh, it's not that used for transformations previously, but in MI400 to cater the complex uh, type of transformations, we introduced this free market templating support into the payload factory mediator. So, the uh, go in the presentation, we can see that uh, the free marker templating. So the free marker is Apache tool. It's a templating engine. So the free marker templating engine is a Java based one. What this templating engine does is it takes a template, it's a free marker template, and uh, we can give it a set of Java objects. Then it would include them, it would replace the placeholders that we have defined in the template and it could output us a nicely formatted document that we need. So that's the main idea behind the free marker template. So uh, since it's Java-based, it's perfectly matching with our products. And also as a templating language, free marker is a very powerful one because it provides so many features like conditional blocks, iterations, assignments, uh, training operation, arithmetic operations, and also it supports writing custom macros and functions also. So uh, while using the free marker template, we introduce this root variable. So if let's say you are writing a template in the uh, payload factory mediator. So if you want to refer the payload, it is in the current context, you can use the root variable payload. And if you want to uh, refer the arguments, you can use args payload, args variable. And if you want to use the context variables or access to variables or transport headers, you can use CTX, access to and TRP functions. So yeah, so that's about the uh, free marker templating in payload factory mediator. So if we go to the uh, Chicken Studio, so this is the uh, Hello World example that we had. So I'm gonna remove the payload factory mediator to import CSV connector into this. So I'm gonna save it and uh, to import the CSC module, what we have to do is it's very similar to importing a connector. We have to right click on the configs project uh, and uh, then add or remove modules or connectors. I have to click on it and then add connector or module and click next. And uh, it's going to be connector store WS2. So we have to import the CSC module. So I'm just writing CSV here, pressing enter. And uh, it would give me the CFC module. So this is CFC module. So I'm going to download it into my workspace. Okay. Yeah, it's downloaded. Finish. Finish. Okay. Now, in here, in this panel, you can see that a new tab has appeared. So this is, these are the operations that are supported by the CFC module. So uh, it has CFC to CFC, CFC to Dation, CFC to XML, and so on and so forth. So first, I'm going to try the CSV to CSV. So I'm just click it and drag it here. And uh, after dragging it here, I can see the properties view here. So if I maximize it, so in here we can see the description is the text that is described in here and uh, the header. So the header property, which is say, if I go back again to my payload, you can see that in here the first row. It's not a data row, it's the header. Like it says the first column name is uh, ID, then the second one is first name, last name, like that. So this one is the header. This is not an actual data row. So if our payload has a header, then in this property, we can tell that, yeah, it has a header. You can see it as present. And then if I click on that, 
this, this property appears. It says that skip headers. So, which means in the mediation flow, do we need to keep the header with the payload? So, most of the time, we don't need that. So, in, in that case, we can say, uh, yeah, skip through. Yes, I, I want to skip that. Right? So, and in, in next, we have skip data rows, which means other than the header, do we need to skip any number of data rows? We can do that very easily with that. And uh, we can reorder the columns. Like, let's say I want the first name, first, last name, second, and ID third. And I can do that with this property. And uh, also skip columns. Like, let's say I need to skip the IP address column. I can do that very simply. And, uh, and also the last one, custom header. If I need to remove this header, and if I need to define another one, I can do it, do that with that property. So in this demo, I'm uh, simply removing this IP address. So I want to remove that column from my CSC. Uh, if so, then I can tell it in the skip columns that I need to remove the IP address column. And then what we have to do is we have to add uh, a connect export a project to this because as I said previously these modules are working very similar to connector so to use a module in our project we have to have a connect exporter project so I'm right clicking it new connect exporter so I'm naming it as uh, say connect exporter right and uh, finish so I'm getting the connect exporter project. Then what I need to do is I need to import that uh, CFC module into my connect exporter project. So I can do that by right clicking on the connect exporter, new, and add the remove connector. Then uh, I'm getting this connector visa. In here I'm keeping this add connector module, okay, and then clicking next. And uh, here I can import the uh, module that I need. So my module is in the workspace. So I'm clicking on the workspace and I'm getting the CSV. Okay. Then I'm right. So now my connector is in my connect exporter project. And then uh, I just have to import the connect exporter project to the composite exporter. So I'm going to the composite exporter form and uh, clicking, selecting the connect exporter and saving the project. Then uh, I'll uh, then, and so the, everything is set up. So my uh, API is here on and one thing. So I have to go to this resource in the uh, Hello World example, Hello World API example, this resource is uh, assigned as get method. So, but in, in this uh, example, what we are doing is we are sending a post request to my API with the CSV content. So I need to allow it to access post request. So that I need to do, then save it. Then I'm gonna run export project artifact as run as already selected. If I go to the console, it will start. Okay, it's starting the server. Okay, my server is started. And then I can use the uh, HTTP client to uh, communicate with my API. So I'm going to the HTTP client. And in here, I can see the all the running services. So you can very easily uh, get details about the running services, what are the API URLs and all. In this panel, so I can simply copy the API here and I'm pasting it here. So this is my endpoint, and I'm sending a post request. And uh, I have, I should have a header content type. So since I'm sending a plain text message, and then in the body, I can paste my actual CSV content. I'm copying it. And pasting it, then if I send it, yeah, this is the response that I'm getting. I'll show it clearly. 
So this is the response that I'm getting. So what I have told here is to my connector, I told I got all to do is to skip the uh, IP address column. So in the result, we can see that there's no more IP address column. And, and, and also I said to skip the headers. So as you can see, the first row is the data row or the header row anymore, and we don't have the IP address. So it's that simple to do a CSV to CSV transformation using this uh, CSV module. So we just uh, needed like a two or three steps, right? And uh, yeah, then I'll show you how easily, how to easily convert a CSV into a JSON using the same module. So I'm removing this CSV CSV operation. And in here, we can see that there's this uh, operation called CSV to JSON. So I'm dragging it here. Yes, so it's now there. And if I go to the properties view, it also has some sort of similar properties, like uh, the, if the header is there, yes, my CSV has a header. I do I need to skip the headers. Uh, yes, I need to skip the headers. So I'm just, I'm just setting these two parameters here. And I'm saving the project. And uh, I'm running it. Okay, my application is deployed. And uh, I have the same CSV content that I used in the previous step. And I'm just running it. And as you can see, it has converted to JSON. So I just drag and drop it here. And I just said that I uh, use my CSV has a header. Just, that's just the steps that I did. And uh, you can see it has converted my uh, CSV into a perfect JSON, right? So, that's the beauty of this uh, new feature. You can easily convert CSV to JSON or XML very easily. And uh, yeah, I, I'll do another thing in, in here. Let's see. Uh, in my CSV, you can see that ID is a, it's an integer number. But uh, in here, in the, my JSON, uh, ID is a string. This is because uh, in CSV, we don't have data type. So everything is considered as a string. Yeah, the CSV module doesn't know that that uh, this should be treated as an integer. So if we tell the module that the ID is not a string, it's an integer, treat it as an integer, then it would treat that as an integer. So let's see how to do that. I click on here, go to the properties view, and uh, there's this uh, property called data type. In here, I can type uh, whatever the uh, data types that I need for the column. So if I click on plus icon, it would add new entry. So my column uh, name is ID, ID, and it's asking whether I'm using column names or column indexes. I'm using column names, yes. And uh, the ID data type should be an integer. So I have to specify it here. Then I'll save it, and then I'll run it again. Until it's deployed. Okay, it's deployed. And then uh, using the same CSV payload, if I run this again, yeah, you can see that it's no more a string, it's an integer. So in JSON, we have rewrites like numbers, boolean strings, like that. So it has converted uh, this property into a integer. So like that. We have so many cool features that are in the CSV module. So when you are considering your next integration with CSVs or JSON to CSV, use this. This is pretty convenient to use. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, then let's say I have a JSON and I need to convert it to CSV. So I can do that thing easily. I'm removing this and uh, I'm using this uh, JSON to CSV. Right, and then I'm copying the JSON that I had. Oh, oh I use another one, whatever. Right, uh, okay, I'll, I'll copy this. Right, and uh, yeah, if I go to the properties view of this, this has only single property. It uh, asks us whether we need to specify another CSV header. If we don't specify it, would get the JSON object keys as a CSV header. So I'm keeping it as it is, and I'm running this. Okay, it's 
Lloyd Lloyd. And now in here, now I'm sending a application uh, JSON. JSON and the body is the JSON. And if I run it, yeah, you can see that the uh, required CSV output is here. So it's very simple. We have a JSON, we can convert it to a CSV in a single step. So that's the uh, convenience that uh, CSV module open to the MI. So yeah, that's about the uh, demo for the CSV module. And then if I quickly go to the presentation, uh, I told you that we have introduced free market template language into the payload factory mediator. So before explaining more about the root variable, I'll show you how that looks like in the integration studio. So I'm removing this uh, connect module. And if I go back to the mediator step, and if I open uh, the load factory, the factory here, and if I go to the properties view, uh, in the latest versions of Integration Studio, you can see that template type properties here. So this property, using this property, we can tell the MI whether to use the previous uh, templating language or use the free marker templating language. So in here, if I choose free marker, then I can type any template inside the payload uh, text area. So this is where that uh, root variables are coming. Let's say you're writing a template here and you need to refer something in the payload, then you need to have a way to embed your payload or sort of property in your payload into this script. So that, we are doing using the root variable. If you use any of these variables inside your template, then you are getting access to the payload if you're using payload, or you are getting access to the arguments if you're using arg, or properties if you're using CTX access to a TR, right? So, okay, let's go for an example and see how this works. Right? So in this example, uh, what I have is a input, I have an JSON. And in the output, I have a XM. In my input, I have a JSON, and in my output, I have an XM. So in my integration flow, what I need to do is I have this JSON, and I need to convert it to this XM. So let's see what uh, do we need to do. Uh, so in here, users tag is here, and we have name as John Doe. So name comes from the first name, here and the last name here. So it's a combination of two properties in our JSON. And the age 35 is coming from this age property in our payload. And the address uh, Manhattan and NY, it's coming from, uh, okay, Manhattan is coming from payload uh, location city. And NY is coming from payload location code. So it's sort of uh, uh, going through the payload and embedding the variant. So if I, okay. I see the template. So this is the template that we need that we need to write in our payload pack to do this transformation. If I quickly go through the template, we have something similar to the output. Yeah, in a free marker template, it's more similar to the output that we need. So we have defined the use tags and name, age, and address tags. And in here, we have defined what should go inside the text for the name tag. We have told it that uh, give me the payload dot first name. So in here, payload is a JSON, but in free marker, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you have a JSON, if you have a XML, it doesn't matter. The same dot notation is applied to everywhere. So you can access a property in a JSON using dot notation, and you can access a property in an XML using the same dot notation. So in here, what I was telling to the template is, you need the payload dot first name. Payload is this one, and the first name is this property. And having a space, and then you need the payload dot last name. Payload is this one, last name. And then for the age, you need payload dot age, and for the address, payload dot location of the CD. So you can see that uh, it can go deep inside the object. It doesn't matter what level you are. In. So payload dot location of CD. So payload dot location dot CD. Yeah, that's okay. And then payload dot location dot state dot code location state code. So that's it. So I'm just copy the template down and go to Integration Studio. 
and we need to write down our template here. Right? So this is where we need to write down our template and Studio is supporting uh, the syntax highlighting to a certain extent. So we can see the template here and I just save it. And uh, I uh, deploy the application and see should give me the desired output that I required. And uh, the okay, so the next example, what I have is a XML to JSON conversion. So if you can see the previous one, uh, we have access our properties using dot notation. And in here also, even though this is an XML, we can access our properties using dot notation. So that's fine. As I said before, the free market templating language allows us to traverse to every data type using the same dot notation. So it's very easy to remember. We don't have to remember one for JSON and one for XML. Everything is same. Uh, but there are something different because if I, if I go quickly go to the input and output, what I have here is I have the first name, John, last name, Doe, age, location, and all. And here I have name uh, combining the first name and last name. Yeah, that's fine. Something like that. And age is coming directly from this. That's okay. And the address, the Manhattan is coming from the city tag. And the NY is coming from the attribute of the state tag. So that's a different thing because in JSON, we don't have that attribute. So if you want to define an attribute, you just have to uh, add this at sign and then write the attribute name. So that's the only difference that uh, we need to know when we are working with the JSON and uh, XML. So yes, so uh, I just uh, execute my program. It's deployed. Okay, deployed now. So I'm running my previous example. So in here, my input is this JSON. So I copy that here, and the content type is okay. And if I run it, yeah, you can see that I'm getting the required XML. So it's easy as that. You just have to define the template. It's very easy to learn. I mean, trust me, the uh, free market template language is a very straightforward template language to use and learn. So you might be able to run your first integration in the uh, free market template language in like in few seconds, few few minutes actually. So yeah, that's how to do the JSON to XML thing. And if I go to the XML to JSON, I copy the template here and uh, the properties we use. The template here and my output is a JSON one. I will define JSON here. As you can see, we have the syntax highlighting supported. And if I save it and uh, I export it, okay. So if I go to the HTTP client and uh, use my input, this XML, XML here, and uh, the type would be application XML. If I run that, yeah, I'm getting the required JSON out, right? So in the next example, we are generating a CSV template, CSV payload from the free marker template. So in here, what I have is a input XML file. It's sort of an uh, person array. We have one person here and we have another person here. And now what I need is a CSV from this. I have ID, first name and last name. And uh, these records are coming from this person object, like ID here and first name here and last name here like that. So I need to do this conversion. I need to create a CSV from this XML using free market template. Then this is the template that I have to use. As you can see in the first line, I have defined ID, first name and last name, the header, 
and then you can see this list operator. So use, using this list operator, we can iterate to the payload. We don't have to define everything in the payload like just by hand. We can iterate through this. So in this iteration, I'm saying that iterate to the people dot, uh, payload dot people dot person. Payload is this one, people is this, and person is this. So I'm inter in, uh, instructing the uh, free market template language to iterate through this person array and give me a single element as person. And then inside the loop, inside the uh, iteration, I can access the current element. Then I can write, like, uh, I need the person.id here, and then I need the comma, and then I need the person.first name, then the person.last name. So actually, this is the structure of my output CSV. It's a loop, go to the loop, and just uh, give me this value. Right? So if I copy this down, I copy this down and if I add it to my and my output would be a text. So I have to change the media type, type, but the output is, and then save it. And uh, go to the project. Okay, if I teach deploy. Okay. And go to the HTTP client, copy the input. So it's again application XML that we need to change it. And if I run this, yeah, I'm getting the CSV that I require. So it's very simple. You just have to learn a few things about the uh, free market template language, and you can do almost any transformation that you need. You don't have to anymore go to a script mediator or a class mediator. You can do anything, any complex transformation using this uh, free market templating language. So the last example for today's session, I'm doing a bit more complex transformation. Uh, I'm sure that you can't see clearly what uh, the example inputs and outputs are. So I'm just going to my uh, VS code and I'll show you the inputs and outputs. Just, uh, okay. Okay, so these are the inputs and outputs. Uh, sorry, input is this side, input is my JSON, and output is XML. So if we quickly go through this, uh, we can see some new things here, like in my uh, output XML, this tag is a dynamic one. So this is coming from the customer ID of my input JSON. So in, in free marker, we can, we have the freedom to define uh, dynamic tag names also. That's a really, uh, helpful one when we are doing the integration because we know that we have lots of use cases of that we need to do that several times and it can be done very easily using this, this newly introduced method and uh, this cake array is coming from these items each item is an array and then uh, let's say the tier gold is coming from here and wso2 is coming from here and uh, you may have noticed that in here, the WS2 is lowercase, and here it, I need it in uppercase. So that also we can do very easily with free marker. So I'm not going to hold the transformation that we have here. I'll just uh, go to the right again and show you the template. So this is the template that we are going to use to do that transformation. If you can see in here, we have defined the name of the tag that we need. This is dynamic. We don't have to define it, predefine it. So we can tell the free marker to define the uh, tag in the runtime. That, that's possible. And here we have an iteration. And as we can see, we can have an inner iteration also. That's also possible. And uh, this is how I did the uppercase thing. So I'm getting the payload.customer. I'm asking free marker to uppercase it. It is gone. So that's also possible. If I copy this down. And in the payload factory mediator, property here. If I paste it, and uh, it's going to be a XML. So I'm going to click. And if I run this. Then uh, my input 
میتونه All right, so my application is deployed, and if I go to the HTTP client, Save it here. Okay, adjacent. Mm -hmm. Running. Yeah. Getting the uh, required XML output. So that's convenience as it is. Like you just have to write the template, and it could do any complex transformation that we need uh, without like, giving us any headache. So, yes, so that's the end of the session today. And uh, we are welcoming your questions. So, you can send us questions via the chat, or you can unmute yourself and ask any question that you have from the WSO team or from the community. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's a question that asking, uh, will this free market template work for API manager also, or is it only for integration? At this moment, uh, that's only for integration. Yes, uh, at the current release, uh, it's not released for the API manager. If you have to do an iteration of XML or JSON for conversion, then what changes? Uh, we have to make, yeah, I think I showed an example of uh, XML or JSON conversion. XML. Dylan, for the previous questions, we have updated Synapse in APM, right? So it might work, no? Payload factory? Um, Free market? Yeah, this is an XML to JSON conversion. So yeah, we can do any uh, iterations or whatever thing that we need. And in the complex example also, we can see the iteration of a JSON to perform an uh, XML. I think that answered your question. Okay, thank you. So, any more questions? Um, uh, hi, Dylan. Uh, this is Deva. Just a quick question. Uh, maybe I'm new to Integrator. How you are starting the server? Um, just to, like I've seen that you are running an 8290. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. um, how you are starting the server when you show the demo, it showed like 8290. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Dylan. Okay, maybe I think something kind of a audio issue. I think uh, maybe I will raise this later. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 I, I can hear you now. Yes. Okay, okay. My question was like maybe kind of specific to um, the the demo uh, when okay. you were running the server. Um, I was trying to parallelly run it, uh, okay. but I couldn't bring the server up. Is that, are you running that, uh, uh, the server, it showed like the port 8290, are you just running um, from the integration studio itself? Oh, yes, yes, I'm running for the integration studio. I'm using the default configuration, but if you need to change anything, you can uh, configure your server from here. You can see this button, server configuration. So if you click on that, and then uh, you can configure your server. If the port is already using, you can set an offset here. You can uncomment this line and set offset to something else like 20. Then it could uh, work in uh, ports 
the Geforce Plus 20 or you know, set of 20, then it should work. I mean, I'm using default settings and there's no any other server running in the machine. So therefore, there's no issue. And also I can I can uh, stop it and run it again. And I stop it and what I did was I click on the composite exporter project and click on export project artifacts and run. And in here, make sure you have selected all the projects that you have. And in here also, you can pick the micro indicator if you need. Just click finish. Then uh, it would start here in the console. Uh, maybe if you're in okay. studio, is uh, just make sure you have the latest update. Okay. To make sure there's okay. no bugs or not. And it should start. Just take about the port offset. I think it should work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm thinking okay. that something missing over there, but I, I will review it. Back. Okay. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I have one question. Uh, this is not specific to um, uh, integrator, but is it okay to ask, like, or it's something? Hello. Yes, they are going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, so my question is like, I'm kind of uh, working on one conversion. So basically what I want to do is like, um, I need to, this is an API manager. So um, I need to convert um, a JSON to um, a multi-part. So, so the, the request is like, we need to send or we need to call the API, uh, but the API accepts the attachments in multi-part. So, which means um, we would need to send a payload, but along with that, we would need to attach some documents. So all of them should go as like a multi-part binary format. So I'm trying to play around like this through class mediators. Um, there are some uh, internet uh, articles about it, like uh, um, some, some configurations, which I need to do in API manager so that I can send it out. But uh, uh, that's where I, I'm trying to use the payload factory. But when I use the payload factory, it always try to send it in XML. But uh, here, the, pay, the payload that I wanted to send it in JSON, uh, but all the documents, I mean, the, the real uh, documents that I'm going to attach should go in binary format, which base 64. Uh, I mean, it kind of, um, um, uh, I mean, if, if you have any articles or any suggestions like um, to point it out, like, hey, you can try this one or this article may be a good option to try it out. So yes, I directly using the payload factory actually you can't do that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, let me just check and tell you whether okay. you can find document or something for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Any any link or anything like you know potentially yeah. I will do trial and error and other things like that, but anything that would really help. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, sure. So one more suggestion. Uh, so are you a member of the Slack channel? If so, can you post the question there? Then we yes, will, uh, we can directly yeah. share the links. Okay. Uh, I'm a member of uh, that Slack channel. That, uh, that also one of my plan. I need to just uh, uh, yeah. I will post it there also. Thank you. Yeah, we will share the links. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's almost the time to end the session. So if you have any questions, you can quickly ask, or otherwise we can uh, wrap up the session for the day. Okay, thank you. So.
So uh, yeah, okay. Seems like there's no there's no more questions for today's session. And uh, yeah, then finally, I would like to tell you about tell you that uh, yeah. uh, I would like to tell that uh, this session is recorded and this would be available shortly in our YouTube channel WSO2. So if you miss something, just refer the recorded video in our YouTube channel. And we are more than welcome you to give us any suggestions that you have to improve our community calls, or you can suggest topics that you would like for us to have in the future community calls. And I think uh, uh, you enjoy the session and please join with us with our next community calls also. Thank you and goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.